Hey guys, Josh here, and today I'm going to be taking a first look at Dincom. This is an upcoming farming game set to release on Steam in Early Access on July 14th, so just a few days from now, and the developer of the game, James Benden, actually sent me a key so I can check out this game with you a little bit early, so let's just jump right into it and start a new save file. And the first thing we'll do is create our character, and let's take a look at the options that we have. So first you can pick your skin color, so we've got seven different options. Then we've got the hairstyles, and it looks like, at least for an early access, there's quite a few options. And one thing I gotta say is that I really like the effects and animations that happen when you change your hairstyle. But yeah, there's quite a few options. I'm gonna go for something simple, I don't know if you can change it later. Then you can pick your eyes, gonna pick something simple like this. Then you can pick your nose, or maybe you should say select the nose. And I'm gonna pick uh, maybe something simple, a small nose like this, and a cute little mouth like that. And lastly, you can choose the color of your shirt, and I like that every color comes with a different design as well. So we're gonna go with pink, and let's confirm, pick our name and the name of our island. And this game is set in Australia, so let's go with something Australian. Not very creative, but we'll go with Kangaroo Island. And let's just jump right into it. So a long time ago, everything went south. And so I think like a lot of games, we'll start in the city and move to the countryside. Almost everybody was forced to move to South City. The people of South City live cold and miserable lives. You were born here, and it does indeed look very cold. Most people have no desire to leave, but you do more than anything. And you might have found a way out. Help wanted. Looking for young go-getter to accompany me to my old home, Kangaroo. Voyage and accommodation will be your initial compensation. Anyone interested? Oh, I didn't have time to finish reading this, but... I don't know if that's our grandma or whoever invited us to Kangaroo, so yeah, let's go to Kangaroo Island with that lovely little lady. And we are now flying over Kangaroo and will be landing shortly. All passengers, please prepare to leave the airship. Oh, I think <laughs> we've got maybe a little issue here. Uh, looks like we've landed. I'll tell you what, I'm glad you've decided to accompany me on this adventure, Josh. I was starting to think no one in South City was brave enough to join me. When you were the first and the only person to respond to my ad, I knew you were the right person for the job. Oh dear, look at old Fletch waffle on. Let's get cracking, Josh. I'll see you outside, okay? Yes, let's go outside. Um, I can't move. I can't do anything. I think uh, I'll start this over again. Okay, take two. Things are looking better already. So you can move with WSD, go outside. And by the way, I think the island is randomly generated because when I flew over, it was looking different than the first time. Wow, well, smell that fresh air. I'll tell you what, it feels good to finally be back on Kangaroo. Now, Josh, I'm going to need your help getting settled. I'll give you this base tent. Take your time and find a good place for it. It'll be our new home for a while. Take this map as well. If you have any questions, please just ask me. I haven't been back to Kangaroo for a very long time, but I think I can still be helpful. I'll be waiting by this dock until you set up the base tent. So if you get lost, just check your map to find the dock again. Good luck. Thank you. So we just got our tent. And we got a map, so let's take a look at what our island looks like. So we start on a small little island here. There's lots of rivers and looks like there's different biomes, maybe four different biomes. But yeah, I think the island is going to be different every time. So if you don't like how your island looks like, you can restart. But I think we're going to stick on this little island here for our base. So in this game you're gonna get to build a base and a town from scratch and we've got a pretty big beach here so maybe we can place a few buildings not directly on the sand but right beside here near the river and it looks like there's already some wildlife so I'm looking forward to seeing if we can interact with all of these creatures. And okay, so when you place buildings, they need to be on level ground, and I feel like that's gonna be somewhat of a challenge. Oh my gosh, I'm getting attacked by an alligator right away. Okay, so <laughs> you can see the dangers from Australia right away. Okay, so I think I'm gonna actually, I don't know if you can move buildings later on, but I'm gonna start on the sand because um, the ground is not flat. 
anywhere else. Whew, this game is dangerous. Okay, <laughs> so this is where we decided to build, huh? It's absolutely perfect. Our new home here on Kangaroo. Thank you so much for setting up the base tent. Oh, and guess what? I actually have a tent for you too. I know it's not much, but it will be a place you can call home. Now there's plenty of room to spread out here on Kangaroo. So please take your time to place your tent. You'll probably... I saw the shadow. Okay, that's just a butterfly. I got scared again. You'll probably be visiting the base tent a fair bit. So keep that in mind while you're looking for a spot to claim as your own. I'll be inside the base tent getting things ready. Come and speak to me once you've placed your tent. All right, so I'm gonna stay near the base, but I also want to have a little space, personal space for my farm. So maybe I can go, oh, there's some kangaroos already. Okay, so I'm gonna place it here and I'm gonna have a big yard for farming so let's try to interact with these uh, okay so this guy is running away from me and what about this one so these are not kangaroos right I'm not sure what they are but they have um, antlers so please <laughs> correct me I don't know the English name for these animals let's actually check the inside of our house Let's see how it looks like. Ooh, so first of all, there's no loading screen, so I like that. And yeah, very empty, but we'll get to upgrade it, customize it eventually. I don't know if we can move the buildings, but for now, let's go talk with Fletch and let's try not to get attacked by the alligator that was around here. I don't know if it's still there, but yeah. Okay, let's go talk with Fletch. Ooh, that's a nice little base. So we'll do some crafting here, some stuff here you can read this book tracks the tom awards oh so happiness level amenities beauty museum economy license so you can see the level of the town this actually reminds me quite a bit of animal crossing new horizons where you get the score of your town and also just how you start on an island where there's no one and you'll have to just build your town and i guess invite more people and decorate the island and all of that fun stuff but anyway, let's talk with Fletch. You found a good place for your tent. I know it's not much, but I hope you like your new home. I'll tell you what, you've got the spark, Josh. You see, most people back in South City are scared of leaving. There is something about that place that pulls the spark out of people. But I'll tell you what, we certainly aren't the first to leave. Have you ever heard of the traveling trader John? Uh, no, I haven't. I'll tell you what, he's a bloody legend. Rumor is that his parents acquired him by trading a set of antique cutlery. Trading is in his very blood. John got in contact with me before we left South City. He's interested in visiting with his shop here. I'll tell you what, we can't miss an opportunity like this. I reckon we get this visiting side deed ready for him. That way we'll have a place ready for any visitors who come to Kangaroo. I'll let you decide where the best place for this visiting side deed. Just be sure it's close by. We want visitors to feel like part of the Kangaroo community while they are here. Who knows, maybe we can convince him to set up a permanent shop here. Be sure to talk to me once you have placed the visiting site deed. Uh, maybe on this little hill right here. And uh, I really, really hope we can move things later on. Someone is in the way. Oh, I just have to move a little bit. Yeah, I really hope we can move all of these buildings later. But I'm going to place this here for now. Is this a good place? Yes, it is. So we're all set for visitors, huh? Well done. We've only been here for a little while, but you've achieved so much already. You remind me of my father. He was born right here on Kangaroo, you know? He was a true blue adventurer through and through. He loved doing new things and keeping track of all of his milestones in his adventurous journal. I wanted to come here and try to meet those milestones myself. But I'm getting a bit long in the tooth, Josh. Please, I want you to take his adventurous journal. Please keep good care of it. This is your adventure now. All right, so I got the journal. That journal means a lot to me, but I think my dad would be glad someone like you is looking after it. But I have a challenge for you. I want you to try and beat my father's milestones. Some of these milestones are going to take a long time to complete, but there is no hurry. I'm also going to add daily tasks to the journal. These will be smaller milestones that should be easy to complete in just one day. For every milestone you surpass, you'll be rewarded with permit points. Kind of like Nook Miles, I guess. I'll tell you what. You're going to want a lot of permanent points eventually, but we can talk more about that tomorrow. For now, check out the journal. I think you'll find that you've actually completed some of the milestones inside. So be sure to claim them. Now, are you hungry? I am. I think it's just about lunchtime. I've seen fruit growing around this island and that sounds tasty. You go and find us some fruit and when you get back, I will show you how to craft a campfire. All right, so let's check our journal. So I've got 
one milestone for placing my tent. So that's good. And I've got another one for placing the base tent. So these were pretty easy. So it looks like all of the big milestones are secret. So you'll have to discover them by yourself. And you've got small daily milestones like crafting one items, catching two bugs, harvesting some fruits. Here you've got tasks to see your quests. Pedia, here you can see all of the fish, bugs and critters you've caught and all the people you know. Here you've got your details. So it looks like you'll have different skill levels for the different activities. And here you can see your licenses, which I don't have anything there right now. Photos and animals. I don't have any animals right now, but that's a pretty interesting menu so far. But let's try to find something to eat now without getting killed. So there are a few seashells here on the beach. I don't think I can eat them, but I will still collect them because I'm sure I'll probably be able to sell them or use them for crafting. So I'll do that. Yeah, let's try to find something to eat. I think these are fruits. I oh, know these are just flowers actually. Oh, and there is a spider. Let's try to interact with the spider. I think that's probably a tarantula, but let's see how it's doing. Oh, it just disappeared. Oh no, it's there. Okay, let's see if we can interact or let's see if I get attacked or let's just see what happens. No, actually, I think it's scared of me. It just, yeah, it, oh, I think it went into the water. Spiders are not too bad, but I think you can probably catch them later on once you have a net. Okay, I think I found a fruit tree right here. I think these are the lime bush, the bush lime, I mean. So I've got three. And while I'm away from home, I'm just gonna get a little bit more. All right, so let's see what Fletch has to say. Oh, you found something to eat. Eating food will help keep your energy up. Here's the recipe for a campfire. I found these stones earlier, so you can use these to craft your campfire. You'll have to find some wood yourself. I already have some. Feel free to use the crafting table in the basement to craft a campfire. Take your time. When you're done, come and have a chat with me. I have a gift for you. So I got some stones and the recipe for the campfire. So let's see how that crafting system works. So there are a few things I can make right now. Rock path, crude fence, campfire, wooden torch, cooking table, and crafting table. These are the recipes that I know. So we'll start with the campfire. It needs gum lugs and stones. You can also tick this box to track the ingredients. So I can see this being useful if you try to craft more complicated recipes. And then you just wait and you got it. So pretty simple crafting mechanics. So let's talk to Fletch one more time. I'm very impressed with the work you've done here today. I think there is a great future for us all here at Kangaroo. Here's a gift for helping me out so much. It's a bug net. I think you should take the rest of the day off. Maybe you could go catch some of the bugs around here or maybe you could cook some of that fruit you found. Yes, I'll figure out something too. I'm sure you will. Oh, and before I forget, take this sleeping bag too. When you get tired, pop that on the ground and have a lay down. I'll tell you what, a good night's rest will do us both good. Thanks for your help today, Josh. I can't believe we're on kangaroo. I couldn't have done any of this without you. All right, so I got my bug net and I got my sleeping bag. So let's try to catch some bugs. Maybe we can try to catch some of the tarantulas we saw earlier something I would never do in real life but that's why I'm enjoying these types of video games all right so let's try to find it and there's the alligator right there so I'm gonna try to be careful not to approach that one too much there are also lots of wild dogs or maybe they're coyotes or wolves or something uh, but these are not dangerous uh, so far they've not been bothering me and I got a butterfly also it looks like all of the tools have a durability kind of like in <laughs> new horizons once again so if you use your net too much too many times you'll have to craft a new one oh I, and i'm <laughs> i just found these birds i thought they were cute but they're attacking me so you really gotta be careful um in this game and i wonder if eventually you'll be able to maybe tame them and because i know you can probably have animals in this game so i don't know if you'll be able to tame these birds and maybe even the alligators 
and all of the other animals. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of wildlife. There are also what looks like turkeys right here. So I'm sure... Oh, I said earlier <laughs> these dogs were not dangerous, but I think they can get pretty wild as well. So yeah, this game is not your typical <laughs> farming game, like peaceful farming game with no danger. Josh, 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 can you hear me? I'm so glad you're okay. It looks like you fainted out there. Please be careful out there and always keep an eye on your health and energy. If the world starts losing color, you know you've worked too hard. Please make sure you eat something to keep your energy up. When you didn't return after a while, I had to call for a search party from South City to come and find you. Those guys delivered you here, but it looks like they went through your pockets and took a fair cut of your dinks. Oh no! Maybe they thought you wouldn't notice. It looks like some of your tools have taken a bit of damage too. Please be careful out there. I'll tell you what, I'm glad you're okay, but I don't really want to have to go through that again. All right, so there is a penalty for passing out in this game. And now my eyes, like, <laughs> I look like I'm not in a good shape. And ooh, this is so beautiful at night. Look at that beautiful sunset over there and the moon. Very beautiful, but very dangerous. I'm scared I'm gonna get attacked by these guys. Okay, let's just sleep. I'm gonna put my sleeping bag in my tent. Okay, I lay down like this, call it a day. Yes, sleep until tomorrow. So it seems like you level up your things as you sleep. And oh, almost level one in foraging and I didn't earn any money. Someone is visiting the island. Yes, so John is here on the little visiting site that I put up yesterday. So let's take a look. Oh, and there's some... I don't know if that tower was there yesterday. It was probably there and I just didn't notice. This thing looks broken. There are parts missing. Should I place something inside? Um, maybe we'll be able to like communicate with this and like get internet or like radio or something. I don't know. But, yeah, let's see how John is doing. So it looks like he's already set up his shop. So he has different tools for sale, a little barbecue, and a little table saw. So, aha, so you must be Josh Fletch told me you're the one to thank for getting this place all set up for me. Thanks for that. I have a feeling we will be doing a lot of business together. Take a look at my wares and feel free to ask me about anything you are interested in. Now, I make most of my dinks selling exotic items back to South City. I guess you could say exotic means any of the items found here on Kangaroo. So if you find anything and I do mean anything you don't want, please drop by and show me. I'll offer you a great price for it. All right, so I'm going to sell some of the bugs I found yesterday. And so let's see, so I've got one butterfly. Oh, maybe I should keep them for the museum actually because I know there's gonna be a museum. I saw it in my journal. So I'm gonna sell this one. And let's sell something else. So I've got a few bush limes, so let's try to see. I can offer you 540, all right, let's sell everything. And all right. So, I don't know if I'll be able to get these tools for free eventually, so I'm not gonna buy them right away. Let's just go and see Fletch for now. Ah, good morning, Josh. Did you happen to see that John has set up his tent at the visitor's site? I told him all about you and how you've helped us get started here. He sounded impressed. John trades all sorts of things back to South City. I reckon nearly anything you can find on this island will be available to him if he'll buy fruit, fish, bugs, and even rocks. John also sells a lot of useful tools. He's got mining equipment, logging tools, and even some fishing equipment. Although probably can sell you a lot of tools until you have all your licenses in order. You know about licenses, right? Uh, no, I don't. Licenses are an old South City idea. I'll tell you what, you didn't need a license for anything back when I was growing up. But these days you need a license for everything. Luckily I'm actually an accredited license giver. If you want to apply for a license, come and talk to me. You'll have to spend some permit points to get them. But if you keep doing milestones, you'll make enough in no time. As you get better at doing certain tasks, new license levels will open up too. Now let's see if there's a license you can apply for right now. So there's a mining, logging, fishing, excavation, hunting, farming, and vehicle license. So for all of the different skills, you will need a specific license. And I think we can start with the mining one because I'm sure it's going to be a pretty useful license to have. So you don't need to pass any test or anything. You just buy it with the permit points. And I've got a few milestones here that I can collect. So I'll be able to get another license. 
So I'm gonna get the logging license as well. So actually, I don't think I'm gonna be getting any of these tools for free. So I'm gonna buy an axe and a pickaxe. So I'm gonna go out and just try to get as many materials as possible. Try to catch some bugs to get money. Try to harvest some wild fruits. And yeah, just try to make a little bit of progress. So I've been picking up quite a good amount of seashells on the beach. So I'm gonna go see John and see how much money I can make with those. So I'm gonna select all of my seashells. I like that you can actually sell multiple things at once, which is something you can do in most okay. games, but you cannot do in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So, all right, 962. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good way to make money early in game. And actually Fletch asked me to buy this table saw. So I need to get 5,200 dinks, which is the name of the currency. So yeah, I'm just gonna go out and go get some more seashells. Okay, so I just found some tarantulas. Let's try to catch them. And okay, so you need to aim properly, but they're a lot easier to catch than in New Horizons. So they're funnel web spiders. And let's see if there are any valuable. By the way, I keep encountering new types of animals. So there's really a lot of variety. And I think, oops, <laughs> I think these are not very kind. Also, your running speed goes way down when you don't have a lot of energy. So I hope I don't die. And I hope to make it back home before nighttime. And I have a little bit of food I could eat, but... So hopefully this one doesn't... Oh yeah, it does swim. So hopefully I can make it home before I die. Oh no, I tried to get food from my inventory, but uh, it doesn't pause the game. And I dropped my net by accident. I'm <laughs> just gonna try to grab my net again. Just grab my net and run from this beast. I don't even know. I'm not sure how this animal is called. And it throws fireballs, actually, I just noticed. Okay, I think it stopped following me, so I just want to get home <laughs> before nighttime. I do have some apples, so I'm just gonna eat that to get a little bit of energy. So eating does take a little bit of time, but it gives you energy. And you can't eat too much in a row, actually. It says I'm too full now, and yeah, the energy goes back up little by little, so it's not an instant gain of energy. Okay, I'm almost home, and it's truly terrifying at night. I can't wait to have some proper weapon to defend myself. But I see John's tent here, so let's go sell our stuff and see how much money I made today. Oh, I think he's gonna go to sleep in the base tent. Let's see if I can still sell stuff to him. So I can sell stuff to him, but I can ask him to hang out. Thanks for asking, Josh, but maybe we should get to know each other a bit better first. So it looks like eventually we might be able to hang out with people or like go on dates or something. But yeah, for now, they, he doesn't want to buy my stuff. So I'm just going to sleep. By the way, it gets dark very quickly. I think the sun sets at like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. So I kind of wish the sun would set a little bit later. And I'm level 3. Oh, level 4. Yes. Level 5 even. Level 6. Oh my gosh, my foraging is leveling up so quickly. And I'm not too sure actually what happens when you level up your stuff. I don't know if you get some perks or if you get more materials. Uh, it doesn't really say anything. It might be useful maybe for your licenses later if you want to level up your license. Uh, maybe you will need to reach a certain level. All right, so let's see how much money I can make with the stuff I got yesterday. Let's start by selling our spiders. I want to see how much they're worth each. Three thousand. Oh my gosh, so it's 1,000 per spider. And since they're not really dangerous, uh, at least in this version of the game, uh, they might be a pretty good way to make money. And, and you know what? I'm actually going to sell all of my bugs and all of my seashells. I know I wanted to keep bugs for the museum, but I'm sure I'll be able to get them back later pretty easily. So let's just sell everything. And 6,000. That is pretty good. I think the bugs are valuable. 
and I'm gonna buy the table saw. So that allows me to cut wood into planks. So you bought the table saw. Well done, Josh. Don't you think having John here is great? If only we could convince John to move here permanently. Mm, well, let's worry about getting the materials needed for a permanent building first. The table saw is a great first step. For now, you can have a break. Come back and talk to me when you're ready. I am ready. I've got another job for you. You up for it? Yes, I am. I'll tell you what, I think camping is fun, but if we're going to convince people to stay here on Kangaroo, we gotta start building more permanent structures. I've noticed there's a lot of tin ore on this island. I've seen it popping out of rocks all over the place. I know a way we can melt down tin ore into stuff great for building. Now, I'll need you to bring me some items. We'll need one campfire, three stone, ten tin ore. Keep in mind, you will need a mining license, which I already have. So, let's collect all of these materials so i already have the campfire i already have the stone i just need to find some tin i think it might be this one right here and yes that's what it is all right so fletch just gave me a recipe for a crude furnace and so now i need to build the furnace and once i have it i will be able to make tin bars with my tin ores after that to place some ore in the furnace you just need to have it selected in your toolbar and then you left click and it's gonna put a few at a time and let's just see how long it takes for it to melt it does seem to be taking some time actually so if you want to be more productive it might be a good idea to build more than one furnace so you can melt a lot of things at once all right i've just got my tin bar i'm gonna bring it to Fletch and well done you have proven yourself invaluable once again you're really starting to carry a lot of stuff around I'll tell you what I'll teach you how to craft a wooden crate you're going to need a recipe for nails too I'll tell you what kangaroo is well on its way to being a great settlement again with a furnace and a table so we can start thinking about building more permanent structures I'll tell you what we should try and get John to set up a real shop here yes let's do it that's the spirit Josh Harrigan if we spend a bit of money at his tent he'll see it's worthwhile oh and we should show him how friendly people are around here why don't you ask john if he has anything he needs done if we can prove to him that kangaroo is a great place to move i'm sure he'll ask to live here for good so i can now make nails and i can make a wooden crate but i still have quite a bit of space in my inventory so my priority is not gonna be that it's gonna be to get john to move on the island so let's see I want to chat. What did you want to chat about? Do you need anything? Oh, Josh, you have a mining license, right? Think you could help me out and rustle up copper bar. It would really help me out. Yes, I'll do it. Thanks. So I don't have any copper right now. So I'm going to go back out and try to mine some copper ore. All right. So I just got my copper bar. Let's bring it to John. Here you go. Did you find copper bar? sure did thank you so much so just select the copper bar give it to him wow you really found copper bar you're the best i really owe you one here take this it's not much but i hope you like it thanks again so i got some money 1000 dink so that's pretty good and i think i will have to do a little bit more favors for him so let's see if he has anything else for me I'm all good for now. No, he's good. So maybe we can just go to sleep. Things will get dangerous pretty soon. So let's just sleep. And maybe while I'm sleeping, I could make some planks. Because I'm sure if we build a house, we will need planks. So planks are a lot faster than bars. You can just put them like this one by one. So we do have to stay near the table saw. All right, so it is 4 p.m. now, and as you can see, it is already getting kind of dark. So I'm just gonna go to sleep. All right, so it's now the next day. Let's see if he needs anything. You know what? I feel like I've been wearing the same clothes for too long. I think you can find me some new clothing. Anything new in my wardrobe would be welcome. So I'm not too sure where I'll be able to find clothes, and apparently he wants it by the end of the day. All right, so it's now the next day. I couldn't find any clothes for John, I think. Uh, it was just unfortunately not possible to complete this quest at this time in the game. 
But now he gave me a different quest, which I think will be a bit easier. He asked me to get some jungle perch, which I think is some kind of fish. He told me I should be able to find it in the rivers. So I just bought a fishing rod. I also got different licenses. So I'm gonna go and fish for the first time and see how that looks like. And I also built a spear, so now if I do find some crocodile or dangerous animals, I will be able to defend myself. So, yeah. I also build a shovel, so I can now dig things and kind of terraform like this. Um, but yeah, so you can terraform in this game. I'm not too sure how you can decide if you dig up or down. I think it just depends... Uh, on what other block is beside it and like what the terrain looks like um, So I don't think you can really decide if you dig up or down. It really just depends on the terrain But yeah, so you can at least terraform a little bit and Yeah, let's try to find some fish. So I'm just gonna cast my line like this and you can see there's a fish there Um yeah, it's not... Wait, let me try to aim directly at the fish. Okay, so there's one there. So, like this. And let's just wait a little bit and see how that goes. So, hopefully that's a jungle perch. So, it's gonna bite a few times and then like this. And then just real... Oh! And it seems like this one decided to let go. So, I'm gonna try this. One more time. I don't know if I did something wrong or not. Okay, so I think I just figured out how the fishing works. So you just need to wait, first of all, until the fish bites. And then you left click. And I was too late for this one. So let me try it one more time. So you just left click. And when the fish is swimming away, you stop clicking. And then when it stops swimming, you hold the left click. And then you let the fish swim a little bit, and then you hold the left click. And then if it swims again, you just let it go. So you just need to let it alternate between reeling the fishing rod and letting the fish swim a little bit. And if you do too much of one or the other, then you will lose your fish. It sounds very complicated when I explain it, but once you do it and figure it out, I think it's not too bad, unfortunately. Um, took me some time to get this first fish, but it's not the fish that John wants. So I'm gonna try to get a few more different fish. I think it's a good fishing mechanic because it's not too challenging, but it's also not too boring or simple. It's a very good in-between. And yeah, it just makes for a very fun and interactive fishing minigame. And hopefully I can find a fish that John is looking for. Yes! That's the one, that's the jungle perch. So let's go back to John. So I'm just gonna give him the fish and hopefully that should be enough to convince him to move with us. And let's see, so, oh, so instead of giving me money this time, he gave me a recipe. So I'm gonna be able to craft this lamp to decorate my house or the island. So now let's ask him if he wants to move in. I've decided I really like it here, so I spoke to Fletch and I've applied for a deed so I can set up a permanent store here in town. I hope I can move in soon. So let's talk to Fletch. Hello there, Josh, what can I do for you? Let's talk about the town. What exactly can I help you with? By the way, you can move buildings, so that's definitely something I will do eventually. But for now, let's see the deeds. Here are current deeds. So there's a bulletin board you can make and there's also the shop so this will increase the town debt by 75,000 dinks which looks like a lot and you also need quite a bit of materials planks and tin sheets and nails so i'll just be able to place the construction sites and now that i know that i can move buildings i'm just gonna place it here for now and move it eventually and there is the little box right here, which once again reminds me of Animal Crossing, like when you build the first houses for the villagers in New Horizons. And you just place the materials in there. 
So I'm gonna work on that, but I've been playing this game for about two hours now. I gotta say I'm really happy with what this game is displaying so far. I was really looking forward to it and I am not disappointed. It seems like there's so many things to do between catching bugs and fish and building the little town. And eventually there's gonna be farming, which is something I'm really looking forward to. And I really love the Australian setting and seeing the sharks and their crocodiles, the kangaroos and all of these animals, plus all of the different biomes. This game is definitely taking a lot of inspirations from different crafting and farming games, but it definitely does take inspiration from Animal Crossing New Horizons, not only for the main concept of the game, which is that you arrive on this island and you have to build a town, but I feel like the game in general plays very similarly to New Horizons. And just with the fact that you've got all of these milestones that give you little points and you can use these points to unlock other things. And then you need to build buildings and you need to pay off your debt and all of that. It really reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing with also all of these fish and bugs that you can catch. Of course, the game does not play in real time like Animal Crossing. It's really just in game time so that is a pretty major difference but if you do like the gameplay of animal crossing or if you like the gameplay of farming games in general i think you will enjoy this one i am looking forward to seeing what the farming will look like uh so far i have a site but i don't have any watering can i don't have anything to till the soil i don't have seeds um so yeah i'm not too sure what the farming will look like but I will definitely make more videos on this game. I will also stream this game, so stay tuned for that if you'd like to see more gameplay. And once I've played enough, I will put out a review. But I feel like for an early access, it is pretty good. It seems like there is a lot of content already. And the game plays well. I've just encountered one bug so far. And that was at the very beginning of the game when I was just in the air with Fletch and I couldn't get down and I had to restart my game. But other than that, I haven't encountered any bug or anything like any glitch or anything that was game breaking or annoying. I'm going to put the link to this team page in the description. So feel free to check it out and let me know what you think of this game so far. And if you'd like to see more Dincom content on this channel, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video.